Just start, just start the video, just start the video. It's not that hot. <sighs> do I want my glasses on? Do I want them off? Glasses on? Uh, but they reflect in the light, but they make me look more like a nerd. Uh, choices. I have glasses off, glasses off. Now you can see my makeup. Mm. Hello, welcome. We're at the end, no, I'm gonna post this at the beginning. We're at the beginning of 2024. Now right now we're not, but we will be when this video is posted. And I did this a few years ago. I was like, I'm gonna make YouTube videos and I posted a video on the first. Did I post this on the first? I don't know, we'll find out whether or not I get my arse in gear and actually edit this. But I wanna make content again. And if you've been following me for a bit, you'll know that I am really into reading, like really into reading. Like it's a bit of an addiction. I have a problem. I have a problem. I have a problem. But I was like, hmm, I wanna kick off the new year. I wanna make content again. Uh, and I love watching book YouTubers and book talk in general. It's the only thing I really consume aside from Dan and Phil. We don't need to talk about that though. We don't need to talk about that. <laughs> And I was like, ah, oh, do you know what? I could totally be a book YouTuber, but also just a YouTuber and not like a you, I'm not gonna be a, like YouTuber. I like making content and I was planning on streaming again and I've been making more TikToks and stuff. So I thought, you know what? 2024, I'm chronically ill. I physically can't do a lot because I'm chronically ill, but I can read books and I can share my opinions with you and force you to listen to them. Also, I am filming this on my front camera because I can't, I couldn't get the view right on the other one. So I'm really sorry if I look here at myself instead of here. It's very hard because I'm very distracted by myself. Amy. I was thinking in my brainy brain and this brain of mine and up there here, what? do I want to film to kick off the year? And I thought, ah, this is difficult. I I've, I've watched a lot of like book reviews and stuff like that. And I was like, I wasn't quite sure. I, was, I don't really know. And then I checked my Goodreads for the year. Okay, Goodreads, if you don't know, is a website app thing uh, where you can like review books and stuff like this and like put in the dates you started in, write little reviews and everyone reviews them. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I got a Goodreads this year. I have reviewed a few books, but I'm not very good at reviewing books like typed. I just find it, well, just find it an effort. Um, So I've got a few reviews on there, but I have gone and logged every single book that I read this year. And I read 52 books this year. In fact, that is a lie. I've actually read 51 books, but today is currently the 28th. I have one more book to read this month and I've got enough days to do it. So it will be 52 by the time I post this video. It will be. It will be. So I thought, I've read 52 books this year. That's practically a book a week. I'm nuts. <laughs> I'm nuts. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I picked the five best books I read this year and the five worst books I read this year? and told you about them because maybe you'll want to read them or maybe you won't want to read them or maybe you don't read, maybe you never learn how to read, maybe you're a peasant in medieval ages who never learned how to read. I digress. I thought I could take you through that and, and we could have a chat and then I was thinking in the future what we could do is we could do some more book reviews and I can do like think reviews on the months that are things I've read in the month and, and blah, blah 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 and also have you seen those unhinged recaps of things like you know like my Mike did one on like Gossip Girl and like Pretty Little Liars and then I've seen people do them on like the Court of Thorn and Roses and stuff like this. I would really like to make a video like that. So that is a future goal and I'd quite like to do them for giant epic fantasy series aka Wheel of Time, Lord of the Rings, Storm My Archive, stuff like this where I pick apart the ginormous plot and explain it to you in a ridiculously long video. So maybe we'll do that in the future as well because I think that'll be really fun. I'm gonna get into it really really soon but let me just tell you one more thing. This was it. So um, at the beginning of the year, I was reading a lot of uh, big series that I was like finishing, like big giant epic fantasy series. So I was a little bit slow. But when we got to about, oh, I don't know, September, August, no, September, October, I really went on a grind. I really got, I got really ill, basically. I got, my chronic illness got really bad. And that meant that I was reading like a crazy person. So I kind of went a bit nuts and read a, a crap ton of books. You're gonna see that we flip flop from genre to genre to genre to genre to genre. Okay, okay. I got cultured this year and I want to continue getting cultured. I have no idea what's gonna happen in this year coming and what I'm gonna read, but do you know what? You're gonna come along the journey with me. But without further ado, let me tell you about the 52 books that I read this year. Not all of them, however, what was really cool was that Goodreads did a like summary, like like a like a Spotify wrapped, but on Goodreads. And I was so excited about this when I saw this today. So I thought I would take you through, first of all, just a few of the statistics that uh, Goodreads 
Jones gave me. Also, this chair is so creaky. It's really driving me nutty, mate. So Goodreads gave me some stats. I love a stat. It was really interesting, actually. So 52 books in a year, 51, 52. 52. It told me that the shortest book I read was Animal Farm, which was 128 pages. I loved it, by the way. Animal Farm was banging. Read it in school, read it again. It was really good. The longest book I read was Oathbringer by Brandon Samerson, which was 1,243 pages, and I felt every single one of them. I love that book. I love that. I love I love that book. We're going to be talking about Brandon Sanderson quite a bit. Sorry about it, but it's going to happen. I read 20,888 pages, apparently, although I'm not sure my Goodreads got that quite right because it's telling me I only read 30 something books. And then I counted and I was like, I read more than 30 books. I'm not sure it's updated itself. However, that's what it said. That's how many pages it said I read. My average book length was 632 pages, which I thought was pretty cool. It also told me that the book that was read the most that I read along with a load of other people was 1984. Apparently a lot of people read 1984 this year. I wonder why. Hmm. With the boom of AI. Hmm. The book that not many people read this year, but I did read was You Will Get Through This Night by Dan Howe, which was, by the way, pretty Brilliant. And not just because I'm in my Dan and Phil phase again at 22, not just because my gay uncles are back. I read it before my gay uncles were back and it was wonderful, fantastic, really good. So that was some of my stats for the year. I also wanted to really quickly, before we start, list every single book I read this year, really, really quickly. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna hate editing this. I'm gonna try and put all of them on the screen in text. I'm sorry, future parent who has to edit this. I'm so, so sorry. Um, Future Parent actually hates you so much. I have no idea how to do this. I'm going to reel them off, but I'm not going to bother saying the author because we'll be here forever. Uh, but you can probably just look up the book and you'll find the author. And also a lot of them are by the same author. So let's go. So what we have read. The Crossroads of Twilight, Knife of Dreams, Towers of Midnight, A Memory of Light, A Gathering Storm, The Way of Kings, Words of Radiance, Oathbringer, Rhythm of War, Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, Queen of Shadows, Empire Storms, Tower of Dawn, Kingdom of Ash, The Poppy War, The Dragon Republic, The Burning God, The Chalice of the Gods, From Blood and Ash, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, A Crown of Gilded Bones, A War of Two Queens, A Soul of Ash and Blood, Red, White and Royal Blue, What If It's Us, The Picture of Dorian Gray, The Midnight Library, Lord of the Flies, Animal Farm, You Will Get Through This Night, 1984, Hamlet, Fight Club, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, The Drowning of Arthur Brack, Coraline, Never Let Me Go, Frankenstein, Wildfire, Icebreaker, The Lightning Thief, The Sea of Monsters, The Titan's Curse, The Battle of the Labyrinth, The Last Olympian, The Lost Hero, The Son of Neptune, The Mark of Athena, The House of Hades, and today I am starting The Blood of Olympus to round off the series. Um, so that's everything I read this year. Like I said, we will read The Blood of Olympus before the year ends. Uh, but now let's get into the review. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I don't know how long you're going to sit here, but trust me, it's going to be fun. You might find some gems in here. I actually kind of struggled to pick my favourite books from this year. What I have done is I've picked five favourites, five not even ones I didn't necessarily like, but ones that weren't as strong as the rest. But we'll we'll get into that as we get to the books. And I've also, at the end, I'm just going to do some honourable mentions because there was a few that I couldn't put up there with the top five that need to be mentioned as books that I read this year that were fantastic. What up? It's Editing Perrin. Um, I actually forgot to film the honourable mentions, so you might get Editing Perrin giving you the honourable mentions with much enthusiasm, as you can tell. So without further ado, let's start with my first fantastic read of the year. I don't know what little sequence I just made, but hopefully it looked awesome. So my very first book that I really, really, really enjoyed this year, I actually have on hand with me, was A Memory of Light by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. Both of them. If you didn't know, this is the series called Wheel of Time. There is now an Amazon Prime show. There's two seasons out. It was bussing. It's really good. It's really, really good. You should watch it. Um, and this is a ginormous book series. As we can see, she's a chunky girl. She's a chunky girl. This is the last book of the series. I have an emotional attachment to this series that is unreal. I have named myself after one of the characters in this series. One of the main characters is called Perrin. My name is Perrin. So I'm a pretty attached to this. It took me six years to read this series, okay? 
six years because every single time I started reading this series I got to about halfway through and I would put it down and not touch it for months and then every time I wanted to pick up the series again I had to read it from the beginning because it's so incredibly big and complex that you have to start again to remember what on earth has happened and I never ever pushed through I never ever ever pushed through until the next like the last read through I've just done which I started well over a year ago um so this took up most of the beginning half of my year because as you can see these books are chunky chunky books chunky girls okay they're fantastic also for more context Robert Jordan is the original author he wrote uh, most of the books however he uh, had an illness and he knew that he was going to pass away and so he wrote down all of his notes and he found another author called Brandon Sanderson who basically took those notes and wrote the last three books I want to say he wrote the last three books with Robert Jordan's notes and the final battle I think I could be wrong was actually written by Robert Jordan which was really really cool before he died um r.i.p robert jordan absolute legend so this was the very last book so i have a moment i had a, i had this when i read this this was emotional this is the end of a humongous epic series and i don't know how mans was ever going to finish it without it being anticlimactic because it was a little bit anticlimactic just a little bit but how can you finish a 14 book series without it being a little bit anticlimactic do you know what i mean however i was satisfied i was satisfied by this book very very much so i'm not going to get into the plot of this book book because how can you get into the plot of something like this if you guys have absolutely no context of what's happened in the first 13 books before this however if you are a fan of like lord of the rings game of thrones that type of thing this is your series you'll really really enjoy this it is wordy it is meaty it is chunky and it can be a little slow in the middle everybody who's read wheel of time knows about the slow in the middle we're going to talk about that in a minute but personally i absolutely loved it i really really enjoyed it this was the final battle the final battle was incredible the character deaths i'm not going to spoil just in case were emotional i felt them i felt them you should have seen me outside in my shelter reading this book max was there watching me my housemate he was watching me and i was crying <sighs> I was just crying. I was an actually emotional wreck when I finished this. It <laughs> oh no! <laughs> felt like someone had just taken my baby away. I don't even have a baby, but if I have one, I'm sure that's probably how it felt. That's probably a bit dramatic. But you know what? It was wonderful. And I must say, one of the highlights of this book, which is a little bit of a spoiler, but it's not too much of a spoiler because it's a good bit, is Brandon Sanderson wrote this a lot of this book. And he wrote in like this story about Pavara, who's one of the Aes Sedai, and I want to say he was called Andrel. It's been a while since I read this book. And I loved it. I it was one of my favourite storylines. It was such like a throw in at the end, but it was so cool. It really, really was cool. Brandon Sanderson's little bit was awesome. And that takes me into Brandon Sanderson because Brandon Sanderson, we're going to be talking about him because he also writes books of his own and they are incredible, incredible. So I was already hooked on Brandon Sanderson from Wheel of Time, but still love, still love Robert Jordan. So yeah, Memory of Light, incredible, really, really good. Wouldn't necessarily expect you to read it if you haven't read the whole series, but will say the series is bussin' if you want to. Highly recommend listening to the audiobooks if you find them slow and difficult. Audiobooks make the slow parts a lot easier to digest. But yeah, that was the first good book I read, Memory of Light, by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. Very, very good, very, very good. Now we're on to our first not so good. I don't want to call them bad because they weren't bad, but I didn't actually read any. Actually, that's a lie. I did read some bad books this year, but I don't want to call this one bad. It just wasn't as good as other books I've read. And that is Crossroads of Twilight by Robert Jordan. This is book 10 of the Wheel of Time series. It's slow, man. It's slow. It's really, really slow. It takes forever. I had to push through this. This is where I've stopped every single time I've reread the series. This is where I stopped. This is where I couldn't go any further and I put the books down and I didn't want to carry on. This was exhausting. Exhausting. But it's basically uh, just all about Perrin and his bloody knots. If you've read this, you know what I mean. It, long story short, his wife gets taken and every day she's gone, he ties a fucking knot in a piece of rope and I'm like, Perrin just, oh! 
Oh, stop talking about your wife, I don't care. It's also Elaine's succession. Uh, Elaine is one of the characters that she uh, needs to become queen and it's just tedious and long. And there's also like a million Aes Sedai that all have names beginning with S. It's confusing. It sucks, okay? Actually, it doesn't suck. It's an okay book, but compared to the rest of the books, this was the slow one. I think the one before was a bit slow as well. I think the one afterwards is not amazing. But after Brandon Sanderson picks it back up for the last three, really good. And you know what? The ones before this, incredible. Like four, five, six, whoa! One, two, three, really good, right? Just in the middle, there's a slump. There's a slump you've got to push through. I did enjoy it enough to carry on and I got through it. I just didn't think it was as good as the others. All right, that's what I'm saying. Still love you, Robert Jordan, still love you. Oh, give me strength. Hello, editing parent here. I got the order wrong. I went straight onto the second bad read instead of the second good read. And so I'm going to be referring to this next bit as the third good read, even though it's technically the second good read. You'll see my mistake later. Anyway, the, or, the, the it got mixed up. I'm stressed about it. And now I have to fix my mistakes. If I refer to things wrong, I'll just put it on the screen. All right, just go with it, please. I'm tired. Okay, my third good read of the year. Now, this one was incredible. I don't actually have a physical copy of this one either, as I borrowed this from Fox, my dear friend. This was Fight Club by Chuck uh, Palunui. Palunui? I should probably look up how to say their names. I'm going to include it here of how you say it. Chuck Palunik. Okay, this book. Wowie. Wowie. Well, in my notes, I've just written wow. Wow. So I went into Fight Club not knowing anything about Fight Club apart from the only rule of Fight Club is that we don't talk about Fight Club, right? That's all I knew. I'd never seen the film. I had no idea what the book was about. I had no idea what the film was about. I went into it totally blind during my crazy reading phase of November and I was blown away by this book. The writing, the pacing, the plot twist, the whole thing was, I read it in 24 hours. It was so good. I could not put it down. I couldn't, I can't, I can't express to you how much this book changed my life. I didn't expect to love it this much, right? It didn't seem like my type of thing. Loved it. It was, it was absolutely gripping. Can I first of all point out? Let me also point out it's very 18 plus and it's extremely violent, extremely dark and very, very disturbing. However, so, so, so good. The writing was absolutely bizarre, bizarre. It changed how I, even imagined a book could be and in terms of how it was written it was like choppy it was like choppy and and didn't really make loads of like didn't follow traditional patterns of how you would write a sentence or how you would form a paragraph and so it kept me on my toes because i was like whoa 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 what's going on and obviously uh if you don't know fight club is about a man who lives a rather average life but he's not like really that happy and then he meets a guy called tommy and Tommy is like an anarchist, essentially. Really not a very nice guy and does some really, really fucked up shit. And then he starts living with him because all this shit keeps going wrong in this guy's life. You never find out his name. The narrator, you never find out the narrator's name ever because plot twist, spoilers, he's Tommy. He has two personalities and Tommy takes over, but you don't know this until halfway through the book. And when I tell you, I audibly gasped when I figured out the plot twist. When it was revealed, I lost my mind. I'm usually pretty good at predicting books, okay? I'm pretty good at predicting shows. I'm pretty good at watching something and figuring out what's going to happen. This one threw me for an absolute loop. I had no idea until I got to it. I genuinely have never been shocked like, a, like, like I was with this book. It was actually fantastic. I can't say enough things about this book it was it changed my life i also then ended up watching the film a few weeks later with fox and marshall and it was awesome the film was really really good a really great adaptation wasn't perfect but hey ho it was awesome it was a really really good film as well I, I i loved it if you are up for a really really dark violent book it's not a particularly massive read either if you're up for you know that's something even i just changed my life okay it just changed my life i need to express that i need to express that okay i can move on to this one Okay, we're on to... Sorry, I have to consult my notes. Um, I wrote them all in my little tiny mini notebook. <laughs> my second bad read. Now I'm actually, am gonna call this a bad read. Okay, I need to talk about this and I'm, I'm, I'm not proud of this. I don't have a physical copy of it to show you. I'm really sorry about that. I'm actually pleased I don't have a physical copy of this book. I don't want a physical copy of this book. I don't want anyone to see my shame on my bookshelf. Please God, no. I'm proud of this series, okay? I'm not proud that I read this. It's From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armantrout. I really hope I'm saying that correctly. <sighs> now, 
If you are somebody who enjoys The Court of Thorn and Roses uh, slash Sarah J Mass books, do I say that? Mass? Mass? I'm so sorry if I'm saying it wrong. I'm sorry, Sarah. I'm sorry, Sarah. I love Sarah. We're not gonna, we're not gonna shit on Sarah. But we are maybe going to shit a little bit on this book from Blood and Ash by, by Jennifer L. Armand Trout. Now, it's very much the same vibe. Sexy men, vampire -y vibes, fangs, heroin in distress, but she's actually really smart and strong. The, the, the werewolves, people who turn into wolves is spicy spicy smut this is smut this is smutty books okay we will be talking about 18 plus books here this is an 18 plus this is an 18 plus book okay this whole series it was pure crap I'll be honest with you, it was pure crap. However, it was mildly entertaining. It was mildly entertaining in a way of, you know what, at this point, I'm not here for the plot. I'm here for the occasionally witty dialogue and the smut. That's pretty much the only reason I'm here. I don't really know why else I'm here. Poppy is your main protagonist. She is the maiden and she has to wear all white and she's always covered because she's like a virgin and all of this. And then obviously she has like a hot bodyguard. Oh my God, my brother is calling me to play Overwatch. Babe, not right now. So yeah, you've got Poppy as your main character who's this maiden. She has a hot bodyguard that comes in. What's he called again? Hawk at first. It's not his real name. He's like her bodyguard and she falls in love with him. A bloody bloody blah. It's all very flirty. It's all very... It's forbidden. I'm the maiden. I'm untouched. Poppy is the stupidest character I've ever met in my entire life. I've never met her personally. If I did, I'd probably smack her. But <laughs> Poppy is the most unreliable narrator. She repeats herself constantly. She's stupid. I'm sorry. I'm being really mean. But she's thick as a brick. Like, I can see what's gonna happen. And Poppy is still 500 steps behind everybody else. The only good character in this series is Kieran, okay? The wolf guy. He's a vibe. We like Kieran. Kieran is the only voice of reason throughout this whole series. He's the only one who seems to have a head on his shoulders and is not thinking about getting laid all the time. In quite a bit, but not as much as the others. Castile slash Hawk is a walking red flag, as so many are in this type of series. It, it was mildly entertaining. It was, it was entertaining enough for me to read the whole series in like two weeks. Could I tell you what the plot of the rest of the series was? No, honestly, I couldn't. I could, I could not tell you what happens in book two, three or four. I actually don't know. I can tell you some main plot points, but that's about it. That's about it. I could not tell you like genuinely what the law is and how all the gods work and how Poppy becomes mortal to not mortal to immortal to more than immortal to God to I don't know how it worked. At that point, I was skimming and I was only there again for the witty dialogue and the smut. Now, the only book I really did enjoy out of this whole series was um, actually, what was it called? A Soul of Ash and Blood, which was the sort of like fifth, I would call it like 4.5. It was sort of like the fifth one. And it was uh, the only one I actually like sort of half actually genuinely enjoyed a bit more because it was basically the first book, but from Castile's point of view. And I just found it a bit more interesting. Like, I feel like she should have started with it. It was like, that was good. Like, that was all right. Like, maybe not good, but it was okay. Basically, what I'm saying is if you want something like a bad version of A Court of Thorn and Roses, and let's say that A Court of Thorn and Roses and stuff like that is maybe not the most high quality reading in itself anyway, but we're not gonna we're not gonna crap on that too much because I've weirdly enjoyed that series. Don't don't I don't wanna I don't, I don't wanna talk about it, I don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> I want to talk about it. But if you want like a, a Poundland version of that, go for it, read it. If you're there for just smut, you won't be disappointed with these books. Very graphic very graphic and kind of weird, kind of weird, especially the stuff between Castile, Poppy and Kieran. Just odd, odd. I'm all for polyamory, but if you're gonna give me polyamory, give me polyamory. If you're not gonna give me polyamory, don't give it to me. Don't tease me. But that, that was my first, second, sorry, my second bad read of the year. Okay, our fourth good read of the year. I don't have a physical copy of it because again, I borrowed this from Fox. They haven't even read it, but they still had it. My fourth good read of the year. This was another life changer for me. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Oh my gosh, I loved it. I 
loved this book it actually took me quite a few days to read because i was not rushing it i really wanted to savor this book fantastic it was a classic and i can't remember what is it when did it come out oh my god when when did this book come out 1818 i want to say 18 no 1890 i don't know it's really old it's really old i'll put it here wow we the author was 18 when she wrote this can i also point out nutty stuff obviously you've probably heard of frankenstein before frankenstein is actually the creator not the creature which is a common misconception the creature is called the creature and frankenstein is the guy who made the creature this book was awesome the pace was so interesting it starts with a load of letters from a different guy's point of view who's found frankenstein like this nutty guy in the middle of like some cold place somewhere and, and have welcomed him aboard his boat and, and then it goes into frankenstein's life story and he's rambling and he's talking to you as a reader which is really interesting and it was really really well paced i like actually really enjoyed it and the wording i find with a lot of classic books sometimes the wording can be quite hard to di digest because they're older but this one was very very digestible it was just complex enough but not so complex that i felt like it was a mental mission to read and the story of the actual creature at one point in the book the creature tells his story and what's happened to him after frankenstein made him and abandoned him it was heartbreaking i felt so many things i was i loved it, it the pace the, everything everything about this book was awesome it was such a good classic i feel like it's a really really good classic if you find classics difficult and you really want to read some but the language is sometimes too much for you this felt like a perfect in between it was just just right and it was an awesome story it had some really really cool social takes on it uh, even to this day and it was like how you treat people and stuff like this and what life actually is and what is worth living and what is the limit of creation and all of that it was wild 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 book i absolutely loved it and i cannot recommend frankenstein more okay the third bad read again i don't really want to my third bad my third bad read of the month and i don't really want to like call it necessarily a bad read okay because it wasn't bad it wasn't bad it just wasn't as strong as other books i've read this year it was this book it's called what if it's us by becky albertalli and um adam silvera silvera now this isn't a bad book okay it's not a bad book it was just a meh book it was a meh book context behind this book is that i actually picked this up when i was in new york in 2019 and this is set in new york i picked this up in a barnes and noble uh because it looked cute and gay and that's why i picked it up i didn't expect it to be amazing but i actually only got around to reading it this year it's a little cute story about arthur who is interning he's like 16 and he's like interning in new york he bumps into a guy in a post office called ben then he does this whole little thing where they have to try and find each other across new york because they bump into each other in a post office and they get each other's names and then they start dating and then they go on little dates together and blah blah, blah and it all kind of goes wrong each time and so they keep doing the date one over and over and over and then arthur has to move back and blah blah blah, blah. It's a, just a little gay love story, okay? It wasn't bad. It was just a bit basic. I found Arthur annoying as well, which didn't help. I quite like Ben's POV, but Arthur, I, I did just find irritating he was a very stereotypical gay i just found it a little bit tiring but it was still cute the drama just didn't really get me and it was very unrealistic and like that's fine books are unrealistic i get it but this one i was like i just can't even imagine this ever being a thing there's a second book i'm not gonna bother reading it and also i think maybe i'm giving this one not quite enough credit maybe because immediately before i read this one the book i read before this one was red white and royal blue which i really really enjoyed and i have a lot of feelings about that book and I, I really really enjoyed that and then i read this so this was never gonna compare do you know what i mean this was never it just wasn't it just wasn't okay it wasn't my fifth good read and my final amazing read of the year did i not put <laughs> Oh my god, I got this so wrong. It was at this moment Pez realised they'd fucked up. Also, I'm sorry about this next review. I got a little bit autistic in this. I've talked about this next book for a very, very long time. But please persevere because I have added pictures and given lots of context. So um, I'm sorry I got a bit carried away with this fourth good read. <laughs> I missed the book. I missed my second good read. Okay, so another good read of the year. I don't know what number I'm on now. I'm so confused. Right, so I guess this would be the fourth. This must be the fourth good read. Okay, we're talking about this. This was supposed to be the second, but now it's the fourth. So this is The Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. Look at this. Look at this. 
Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, she's beautiful. We have Shalan on the front, who's one of our characters. She is a sleigh, she is an icon. And throughout this book, we also have some beautiful, beautiful things. For example, this awesome map. Love this map. But also throughout the book, there are pictures that intersect. So you get these awesome pictures in it, which are often related to the story and sketches from the characters as well. Uh, you get like Shalan, Shalan is an artist and she does like sketches and stuff and you get to see her sketches, they're incredible. They're so good, it just adds to the book so much. This, this, I need to talk about this. I need to talk about my love of this series. I need to talk about the Stormlight Archive with you. This is probably gonna take me a hot second, bear with. I need to tell you about this. It's an epic fantasy series written by Brandon Sanderson. It's his baby. It is the center of the Cosmo universe, sort of, kind of. I don't know, that could be debatable, but in my opinion, it is, okay? So Brandon Sanderson writes loads of books and they're all in a Cosmere, okay? So they take place on different planets with different gods. However, they all were in the Cosmere, so they do link to each other in ways that I don't even understand. If you really wanna get into that, you can go on Tumblr with people who understand it better than I. I do because Brandon Sanderson let me tell you is nuts as an author he is actually nuts the law and the science he creates for his books and the theologies he creates for his books are so incredibly in-depth and complex I don't understand how this man's mind works I feel like I see the surface level and I will never understand the intricacies but nonetheless I love it. His writing is so digestible. His pacing is incredible and his ideas and world building and character building is unlike any other epic fantasy I have ever read. And I've read a fair amount of epic fantasy. I love epic fantasy. And I say this and I still haven't read Lord of the Rings, but it's on my list, but I know it's going to take me some time, so I haven't got there yet, all right? Back off. This is his series called The Stormlight Archive, okay? This is the fourth book in the series. The fifth one is not out. I am awaiting it. It takes him a long time to write these books because, obviously, these are chunky babies. These are very, very chunky. Most of them he splits into two. When you buy the books, you literally buy two books. You get part one and part two. You can buy them you know, they're the same story, but. So essentially in this world, it, 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 it uh, how do I describe it? Crabs, crustaceans. The world is full of crabby-like creatures, okay? So like, for example, their bugs are quite crustacean-like, like shells and stuff. Their horses, they don't really have horses. They do have horses, but they're like big transport animals are these things called chulls, which are these giant things. Maybe I can find a picture. These giant like crab, creatures that move really slow with huge shells. They're giant, they're beasts, like the, the monsters in it are called chasm fiends. They look like essentially giant crab-like thing, crustacean vibes, okay? So the whole world is crustacean-y and there's not like a lot of, there's only like one area on the map that has like grass and stuff. So the, the weather patterns and stuff are wild. The weather is a huge part of this book. It's all about storms and there's this thing called the high storm that moves around the world in cycles and the high storm comes and it destroys everything well not everything it's a very like powerful storm that comes over certain like on certain days all the time like it's a cycle it's a cycle of weather and these high storms has like it has like this energy in it oh my god it's called stormlight and the stormlight fuels their spheres and their spheres are their money and these are like tiny little glass balls with like gems inside them and the gems equate to the the amount of money so like a currency but then they get infused and that's their light source they use these spheres for light sources but also for other things and also like the race system System is absolutely nutty. So you've got light eyes and dark eyes. The dark eyes are essentially the lower characters. The light eyes are like the higher class characters. And you may be thinking, hmm, this sounds like normal racism. No, kind of, yes. I mean, there's races, like there's gotta be races in books. Like we see this in epic fantasy all the time. But in this one, you can have a, like a black character with light eyes. It is based purely on eye color, which is fascinating. And this ties into all of the social dynamics of his books. It's nuts. It's nuts. And in this one, there's this thing called Spren. Okay, so in this world, there's these Spren that appear. They appear for all sorts of different things. So you get like exhaustion Spren that like appear when someone is exhausted. You get something called creation Spren that look like, like little tiny things that you've been creating. And they like pop up when you're like, if you were sketching, they would like pop up around you. You get like glory Spren, like gold things that pop up. You get wind Spren. 
friend that like flew along the wind like little blue lights everywhere when there's wind. It's nuts! And you follow these characters that are so incredibly interesting. Your, your main three, as I would call them, there's a lot of mains actually, there's a lot of main characters, but your main threes that I'm obsessed with are Kaladin, Shalan and Adolin. I literally love these three. I am so incredibly attached to these three characters, I cannot express my love for them enough, specifically Kaladin. I have so many feelings about this character. He is absolutely, so, oh, he's just so well written. But also you've got other characters like Dalinar, who's Adolin's dad, Yasna, Adolin's cousin, and this whole complex royal system. And you, I, I, I can't get over this series. So when I read Rhythm of War, which is the fourth book, I was blown away by this. I loved it. Oathbringer, the one before this, is absolutely exceptional as well. But this one, I think because it was new for me this year, I had reread the first three before I read this one this year, which is why I read the whole series. But this one was fresh for me. The pacing was amazing. Crabs. The characters are morally grey. They aren't always doing the right thing. Like, you're rooting for them, but they're not always doing the right thing. And, and you understand why they're not doing the right thing sometimes. And that's what's so interesting about it. And crabs. Can I just point out, I love the crust station vibes. I'm just so into it. I can't wait for the next one. And in this one particularly, you have this thing with a character called Navani, where she's doing all this science stuff with like notes and music and vibrations and frequencies to sort out a problem. And it's chapters of this. And I couldn't necessarily tell you how the science behind it works. All I know is that I was gripped and absolutely fascinated by how Brandon Sanderson has literally created a science system for his books that is so incredibly in depth that you can't even, you can't fathom it, okay? It's so good. Like, if you like Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, all this crap, please read a Brandon Sanderson book, any of the Brandon Sanderson books. The Mistborn trilogy is also incredible, but this Stormlight Archive series, I can't even with it. It's fantastic. It's fantastic, okay? <laughs> Okay, we're on to our fourth bad read. Again, I'm not going to call this one a bad read. I'm just going to call this a not as good as the others read. We're going to be talking about The Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Mass, 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 Mass. I don't know. Either way, The Crown of Midnight is the second book in the, oh my god, what's the series called? It's the second book in the Throne of Glass series. I read the whole of the Throne of Glass series this year. I've read it before. It was a reread this year. I was just in one of those moments where I needed, I needed that. I needed that. I'm sorry, I needed it. I just needed it for two seconds. I personally think this is Sarah J. Mass, Mass's best series that she has written. Obviously, you have the infamous Court of Thorn and Roses series. We'll maybe talk about that another day. You will also have her new stuff about the house of something or rather house of earth and blood house of something which i've read the first two books there yeah they're okay but this is her strongest series I feel like she had this one like she understood the plot of this one a lot more she had a much more vision for the characters in this one and don't get me wrong it's very similar you've got lots of sexy men with wings or can turn into animals or have fangs and they're very very sexy and they're never not sexy they're always attractive everyone's attractive Everyone's attractive, always. And you've got lots of powerful women who can do really powerful things and there's lots of fire, there's always fire. I actually like this series. I remember reading the first one years ago um, and I always stopped on the second one. It was only really like a few years ago that I actually ended up reading the whole series because I always got stuck on the second book. And this is what I'm talking about, the second book, Crown of Midnight. It's just not as strong as the others. Kale also, Kale drives me nutty. Kale drives me so incredibly nuts, I cannot stand the man. I can't. He does get better throughout the series, but in this book, oh man, I'm not team Kale. I'm not. Especially because I knew Rowan was coming and I was like, mm, Kale. However, this year I did force myself to read Tower of Dawn, which is Kale's book. I weirdly enjoyed it. It was kind of good. However, I just didn't really like this one. It was at this point I hear a knocking on my door. Hello? Sorry, I didn't want to come in at the time. I'm mid film. What do you want? I don't want to. I can't afford it. Okay, goodbye. Love you. You sound really good today. Thanks. I would read these books. Thanks. I like Kale. Fuck, you don't like Kale. You don't even know who Kale is. Go away. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Pain in my ass. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. It just didn't, it, it was like a build up to good bits. And I think it's because I knew good bits were coming that I was just like, eh, come on, crowd of men. Like, like, come on, pick up the pace. Don't get me wrong, got an awful, awful heartbreaking death in it. It's just, it's just not the strongest book in the series. I'm sorry, it's not, I'm, just, I'm gonna say it. It wasn't it for me.
Okay, well, onto our, what I, I think is actually correct, our fifth good read, because I've messed up the order. My fifth good read. And I had to include a Rick Riordan book because it would be wrong of me not to. This was The House of Hades, which is the fourth book in the Heroes of Olympus series. I love the Heroes of Olympus series. I love Percy Jackson. Did you know? You know I love Percy Jackson? So this year in December, I challenged myself to read all five Percy Jacksons and all five Heroes of Olympus books, which very much include Percy and Annabeth. Um, and I challenged myself to read all of them by the 20th. I didn't quite manage it. So now my new goal is to read them by the end of the year. Hence why I've got one more book to read this year. And this is the fourth one in the Heroes of Olympus series. There's gonna be massive spoilers here. Percy and Annabeth fall into Tartarus in the third book of this series. And I love Percy and Annabeth and Tartarus is basically hell. This is the, basically a book of them going through hell. It's angsty, it's wonderful, it's character developing. It also has some really cool bits with the other characters, AKA like Frank gets buff as hell in this book. Leo slays meets Calypso in this book. Hazel she's kind of cool in this book. Jason and Piper are wet wipes as per usual. Don't, we're not going to get into my hatred of Jason and Piper, all right? This one is my favorite one of the series. I've read this so many times. I actually love this book. I literally finished this about three hours ago. I love the pacing in this book. I think it's better than all the others. It's got brilliant character development for literally most of the characters. It's absolutely engaging watching, watching, reading Percy and Annabeth go through Tartarus. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. They go through some horrible things. It satisfies every single part of me. I love this book. If you want a good old read, get some Rick Riordan. The first five Percy Jackson books are very much like aimed at younger audiences, probably like 12, 13 year olds, maybe a little bit younger than that, maybe. Yeah. But they're such good reads nonetheless. Like highly recommend in terms of just like, they're fun. They're really fun. They've got just the right amount of angst. They're not gonna leave you feeling horrible, but they also will leave you feeling satisfied. Then the Heroes of Olympus gets a little bit darker and a little bit more in depth. And I really, really love the Heroes of Olympus series. It has Percy and Annabeth in it that you've just gotten used to for the first, like in five books, you've gotten used to Percy and Annabeth. You love them. You enjoyed their slow burn. They were fantastic. And then you get more of them with other characters that are also really engaging, excluding Piper and Jason. I'm sorry I'm sorry they just annoy me but you get Leo and Frank and Hazel who are awesome characters and more Nico <laughs> come on now so I, I highly recommend Heroes of Olympus series you will love this book if you get through the series okay this is the best one in the whole series all right we're on to our fifth bad read I want to say of the year. In fact, this is a read that I wouldn't again necessarily call bad, it just wasn't for me. I don't even class it as a book I've read this year because I only read half of it. In fact, not even sure it was a half, maybe a third of it. I just wasn't into it. It was called The Life-Changing Magic of Not Giving a Fuck by Sarah Knight. It's a self-help book. I love a self-help book. The best self-help book I read this year, you will get through this night, but damn how. I digress. This one I just didn't really enjoy. I want to feel uplifted when I read a self-help book. This one didn't really make me feel that. One, partly I think this was my fault because this isn't relevant to me. This book didn't feel relevant to me a lot of it was about work but like working a nine to five in quite a basic job or like work going out to work and being employed i'm not employed in that way i'm self-employed slash struggling to work at the moment because i'm ill so all of that was really pointless to me it didn't really mean anything to me and also i found this made me feel just a bit anxious i didn't love the advice because it was very much like fuck it and i was like don't get me wrong, I can do a level of fuck it, but also I felt like this was just a bit too much fuck it. So I, I yeah, this might really, really suit you. So I don't necessarily wanna say this is a bad self-help book because I don't think it is. I just think it wasn't for me and I've read better that made me feel better and made me feel a little bit less negative than this one did, if that makes any sense. Oh, bugger, I guess this is my bit now, isn't it? It's 20 to 1 in the morning. Okay, fine, I'll do some honourable mentions, alright? I'm gonna get through this quick. Okay, first honourable mention is The Poppy War RF Kwang. Uh, disturbing, incredibly thought-provoking and thrilling. It's about some cool-ass shamans. One of the freakiest things I've ever read, but it was really, really good. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Uh, amazing classic, written by a gay man, which is real cool. Interesting, makes you think. Uh, just ignore the anti-Semitism and sexism. It's an old-ass book, is what I've written here. And uh, 1984 by George Orwell. It's relevant, disturbing, and it's scarily similar to what we're going through now. Have you heard the phrase Big Brother? Yeah, that's where it came from. Really, really good. Highly recommend. I read a load of other really good books this year. Just go have a look at what I read on Goodreads, honestly. Like, a lot of it was good. Anyway, I really want to finish this video now. I'll see you in a bit. Does 
that do it? Does that round me up? Is that my five goods and my five bads? Yeah, that was my five goods and my five bads. Wonderful. I guess that was that. This is a 50 minute video. I'm going to have to edit. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. It did take a really long time to edit. Over 20 hours, Perrin. Stop talking so much. So yeah, let's see how this video comes out. I have thoroughly enjoyed all the books this year. I only really got on the grind of reading really, really hard, like towards the end of the year. And the most books I've managed to read in a month is 15. So next year, as the months go, shall we see how we get on? Who knows? Maybe I can absolutely smash 52 books next year. Maybe it'll be less, maybe it'll be more, but you're going to come along with me on this journey. I'm going to make some more booky stuff, but I also think I'm going to make some random content as well. I don't even know what I'm going to make. I haven't decided yet. I'm just gonna make stuff as and when I fancy it. I don't know what we're gonna make yet. If you have something you'd like me to do, like whether it's book related or not, let me know because I'm quite keen to do it. I just want to make some content again. I'm kind of ill, so uh, but that's another video that I'm making, an, an ongoing video about the, the mental health and physical health problems I'm having at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed making it. I'm sorry if my reviews weren't very good. It's difficult because a lot of them were a part of a series, so I couldn't explain the whole series to you. I highly recommend all of these books and all of these series, apart from the ones like I, that I don't recommend. Anyway, I need to stop talking now because this video is an hour long. Thank you so much for watching this. Join me on TikTok at Persworld if you want to see more like consistent content, but you can find my Goodreads Persworld again. That's all the books. I keep it updated on what I'm doing. So I might write some more reviews on there. I might not. I haven't decided yet. But you can find me on Instagram as well. Persworld. Uh, I'm Persworld on everything. Perrin Hooper. You can find me. I'm around. Oh, you can also find me at Persworld on Twitch. I won the Twitch stream again this year. So I've been working on that. So come and join me for a stream if you want. I'll link all of this. All right, you nerds. I'll see you around. Take care of yourselves. Pez is peacing out.